This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 1, this is the last and 11th section. Releasing Specialness and Experiencing Enlightenment Christ calls everyone to awaken to agape, eternal, unconditional love. The only block to this awakening is the filter of specialness, which projects a world where some images seem more important and valuable than other images. This is very apparent in what have been called special relationships, where some people are raised up and some people are put down. In any situation where specialness is cherished, Christ remains hidden from awareness. When Christ is recognized, the folly of specialness has been released forever. Specialness is another name for the ego. Specialness obscures equality and oneness from awareness by its emphasis on form and disregard for content. Love is content. Forgiveness is the great equalizer, seeing all images as equally false. This perspective opens the gate to the remembrance of God. Specialness is a belief that springs forth many concepts. Possession is one such offspring concept. And relationships based in possession serve their master. Time and space and bodies are concepts of specialness and the ego weaves its own picture of reality from the concepts of specialness. I have been asked to share some ideas on the transition from specialness to holiness, the shift from death to life or from grievances to resurrection. This is the awakening to eternal life through forgiveness of illusions. In simplest terms, it is being present and open to what is. There are three seeming stages that precede awakening to divine abstraction. I will share ideas about each stage. The first stage is allowing the darkness of specialness held in the mind to surface and to be exposed. The second stage is a stage of detachment in which specialness still persists in awareness and yet the practice of detached observing is a very consistent perspective. The final stage is really nothing more or less than living in the present moment. It is a happy dream of non-judgmental awareness in which the sameness of perception is recognized always and without exception. I call this experience enlightenment. For most people, in terms of experience, the first stage is the most challenging and difficult. The second stage can entail intense moments and periods of time. Yet due to increasingly effective mind training and consistent transfer of training, these intense experiences seem mostly infrequent and passing. In the final stage, these intense experiences have gone 
replaced entirely by love, peace, happiness, joy and freedom. Allowing the specialness to surface. During this stage being rooted in unconscious beliefs, people still seem to be people and things still seem to be things. The mind believes that it is a human being and that, and that the world, cosmos, is external to itself. It also seems as if the perceived surrounding environment of people and things is at times hostile to the perceiver. The mind which believes in the ego, separation from God, is unaware of the extent of self-hatred it is holding on to. It is also unaware of the ongoing attempts to project this belief in conflict onto an external world, a world, cosmos, that is essentially nothing more than a neutral screen of images. Today, however, the many witnesses to the workings of consciousness are becoming more evident in awareness. For example, currently quantum physics demonstrates that consciousness involves potentials that are subjective and related to choice. There is no objective world out there apart from consciousness. The deep, often unconscious feelings of unworthiness, lack and guilt drive the mind to seek for love, meaning and value in the images of the perceived world. Certain people, things, groups, organizations, animals, countries, etc. are valued in subjective preference patterns that have nothing to do with truth or eternity. The ego's need to belong and its inherent feelings of lack drive it to search for affiliations and associations in form that offer only a fleeting, illusory sense of connectedness. True intimacy is of the mind and can only be experienced through shared purpose. Unified purpose in mind brings a unified perception of the world. The happy, non-judgmental dream that is the goal of all authentic spiritual practice. Detached Observation The spirit offers detached observation as an alternative to the personal perspective of the ego. Though this replacement cannot be accepted as long as the mind still values the personal perspective. Love waits on welcome and not on time. With willingness to expose and release the ego belief system that hides the light, the observer seems to become more and more obvious. As form is seen to be an unreal effect of an unreal cause, ego, false associations of cause and effect are exposed as unreal. Miracles show the power of mind, restoring awareness of the mind as the mechanism of decision-making thus releasing the false concept of the body as decision-maker. 
This frees the mind through forgiveness, which is simply seeing the false as false. As forgiveness is experienced consistently, the mind is aligned with the Holy Spirit's perspective or the observer perspective spoken about in quantum physics. I often speak about the ideas of no people-pleasing and no private thoughts. Essentially what this means is that there are literally no people to please when the mind recognizes that the world is a world of ideas and that nothing can be kept hidden or private in whole unified perception. It is not that one should not have secrets or private thoughts. It is the realization that mind is whole and cannot be split or divided into the known and the unknown. As hurtful emotions surface in awareness, there is another context for dealing with them, other than blaming the people of the world. The healing context of mind and the forgiven perspective of the Holy Spirit bring relief from the guilt-inducing personal perspective of the ego. With the Holy Spirit's guidance, the mind realizes that it is not the doer and therefore has never done anything at all right or wrong. In this realization, guilt, fear and anger are forever impossible and are therefore gone from awareness. Enlightenment You are not at the mercy of the world's concepts and images. Before you awaken from the dream of the world, you will have a happy dream. You will see that you are the dreamer of the dream. You are vast and have dominion over images.